little time goes by without somebody saying to me, how do you write a non-fiction book? How do you come up with ideas? What tips and techniques have you got to be consistent in the creation of such a book? And I'd like to spend just a little bit of time going through my responses to some of those very frequent questions. To get from where you are right now to the finished manuscript in your hands, before it's published, before you've got the artwork designed and, and ready to go, just from the idea to the manuscript completion, there are some very simple routines that I go through. What I will normally do is when I've got an idea, I'll grab a pen and some simple index cards and I'll jot down my ideas for where I think that book is going to go. But let's talk about you and let's talk about what it is that you would like to create. When you're writing non-fiction, you either go from the knowledge you already have or you go out and you do some research and you find out what it is that you would like to write about and you design your book around what you can learn as an outsider coming to the topic for the very first time. You could take a hobby, you could take an intellectual interest, you could take a financial or an economic interest in something and start to say to yourself, okay, what are the main themes that I should explore if, for example, I want to become a first-time investor in the stock market? What are the ideas I should look at if I want to write a book about parachuting? Two very extreme examples, but both stand the test of being something you could package together and put in writing from a non-fiction perspective. If you wanted to, to look at a book about developing strategies for investing in the stock market, you would have a look at perhaps the entry level approach. How might you find a broker? Would you choose not to use a broker and invest in a government protected financial instrument like a 401 fund or an ISA in the UK? Different products in different countries. So you can invest money on a regular basis. Monthly savings plans could be one of the chapters. Setting aside a percentage of your income could be another. Looking at your perspective on risk could be another with a breakdown into no risk at all, small, medium, higher level, and a broader spread of risk across a portfolio. And that's another chapter. You could look at how you treat the use of dividends. Do you reinvest them? Do you extract something? You could look at how you approach market news, how you research company information, how you look at report and accounting information. If we take the parachuting, you can look at the significance of parachuting and its development from being a purely military and espionage activity into the social role that it has, the weekend parachuting clubs. You can look at the, the history of the parachuting movement from military practice through to a social activity with all of the friendships and the development of bonds between people that develop with any kind of club activity. This is true for any book you write about a hobby or a pastime because you will attract the people who are interested in it, the people who are passionate about those kind of topics, whether it's needlecraft and sewing or bookmaking or stamp collecting or amateur radio behaviour doesn't matter we're all interested in multiple different things and, and there's a book there that we will buy to learn more or to get started take your topic of interest and you think what are the main things that people want to know about how can i contribute with new knowledge new information another perspective four people could write the same book about the topic that you're interested in that doesn't mean they are competitors. What it means is that within the sphere of your topic of interest, there are other realms of learning, other angles from which you can analyse the topic that you're going to be writing about. So don't, don't fear the competition because the competition is just other books on the same topic. How many books have been written about investing in the stock market? How many books have been written about sport parachuting? Actually, hundreds. You can take a topic and put your perspective on it and because you have a voice, because you have your own thoughts on the subject, you become another voice 
in the conversation about that topic. You, you shouldn't be recording. Don't think you shouldn't be writing a book because if, if it grabs you, if there is an opportunity for you to add to the conversation because of what you're passionate about, because of your knowledge base, then do it. But note it down. Think about the ideas. Think of how you might structure the book, who it would appeal to. And also consider, and we'll talk about this in a subsequent video, talk about how you will market the book, how you will get that in front of other people, either on their Kindle screen or in a physical format that they can order online or from their local bookshop. As an example of the randomness of non-fiction, I'm just going to show you some of the things that I've got on my shelf so you can see how bizarre they are, but also the fact that somebody wrote them because there was an audience for them. So if I just move this cowbell, there's another story behind that one, and I move these moleskin books. So very randomly, a book on freshwater fishes, a book on flags, and another one this time on flowering trees and shrubs. Hugely random, very niche, but all non-fiction. By the way, I don't write these, but I collect Observer books because I, I think they're fascinating for the illustrations and the diagrams within them. What are you going to write? Choose a topic, look at your passions, think of four or five things that you're fascinated by, and pick one where you think that in your own book collection you don't have all the information that you'd like. Also consider your skill set and your abilities within this activity or topic of interest and consider what you can add to the conversation. We all want to learn more about the things that are of interest to us. They want information, answers, explanation and illustration of how to be better with that topic, how to develop more skills in that area of activity. And the very likelihood is that you, with the notes that you put down on basic index cards to begin with, you plan out the topic and you develop the answer that they are looking for in your non-fiction manuscript. Get down to the coffee shop or sit at your kitchen table and develop the initial notes from which you're going to write your manuscript. Give yourself a deadline because a lot of writers will say, oh, I'm writing a book on, but they don't say when they're finishing the writing process. Decide what you want to write. Narrow down your point of focus. Start to plan out the structures of the book. What do your readers want to learn about the topic? And commit to your diary to get the book written. It really is as simple as that. By creating a non-fiction book in a specific area of activity, you're bringing to us something that we want from you. There is an audience for any topic of non-fiction. The global ability to search for a book by hashtag or by subject theme or by community group or special interest forums, that means that you can reach people all over the world with your books. We want to find and buy the book that you create. So take time now to jot down your ideas, formulate the structure of a book and commit some time to writing your first draft. Without a first draft, there isn't a second, there isn't a first edit, there isn't a final edit, and there's no book to launch. You can write as much as you want, but if you want to be a published author, you need to take it to market, and the opportunities for people to find your book are completely served by the internet. I hope you find this video useful and that you can like it. If you have any questions, just drop me a note here in the comments below. Thank you.